Surgery in many developing countries uh, is problematic from a number of different things. It's not just technology. There are certain kinds of healthcare problems that can only be addressed by surgery. These cannot be addressed with medications, vaccinations, or any other kind of care. So surgery matters. Very quickly we realized that there was a huge opportunity to help our colleagues in Ghana. Uh, I realized uh, one day when I was doing a bunch of cases by myself in a room that my patients were doing a lot better than my colleague, my Ghanaian colleague in the next operating room's patient. And I, I got to thinking, why is that? We were using the same drugs, the same equipment. Um, I don't think I'm any smarter than he is. Uh, I certainly wasn't any more compassionate than he was. The uh, explanation that I came up with was that I'm better trained than he is. We can't give our colleagues their fancy drugs and fancy equipment, but we can help them get better training. I really think all demographics benefit from what we do. There really is no group of people that gets more or less of some kinds of problems. All women who have children are at risk for pregnancy-related problems. Many of them need cesarean sections. That's surgical. Babies who are born with congenital problems need surgery. All of us as we age have problems with our knees, our hearts, our hips. We know that surgery helps those things. It's not really any one group of patients or people who need it. We all need it at some point. The infrastructure there is quite difficult, whether in South America, India, Philippines, Sub-Saharan Africa, wherever. And the problem comes is that if you have few doctors, right there it makes a huge limitation of what can be done. If you have few hospitals, then that further limits even if you were to have a doctor who would be willing or capable of doing that. And then financially, if that your average patient can't afford a surgery, you need to develop some sort of infrastructure so that that can happen. Our model that we came up with, with the help of our colleagues there, was um, that this is open to all. This is an invitation uh, to anybody who wishes to learn about this material. And the idea is that if you invite people, that enables accessibility. And on a, on a deeper note, from a kind of global accessibility standpoint, if we can help um, our colleagues in various different countries around the world who have limited access to continuing education, if we can help them set up similar courses, then suddenly all these countries that had limited access prior now have access. What we're trying to do is to bridge the gaps between the disparities in care in low resource places and in high resource places and in that way to make it accessible and affordable in all of the places. I think that the hurdles are real and the hurdles have to be recognized. If we keep our focus not just on the simple fixes as we look towards the, the regional government, the national governments in these countries, how can we in some way or another make them see the importance of what these surgical diseases are. Hopefully then we'll have a, a far more robust system of caring for these surgical diseases in the developing countries. I know a lot of people who are doing this work and they're dedicated, intelligent, compassionate people who will find a way to make it work. And my colleagues in the low and middle income countries of the world will be able to provide the care that we do here. It's a continuing process to help people in tangible ways in the ways we know.